Chris Lee and Blake Lovell of Southeastern 14 presented by Stakes here to discuss Auburn's football coaching hire of Hugh Freeze. I guess Blake, not a huge surprise, been a roller coaster of days recently. And one minute you think Hugh Freeze is going to be the coach, the next minute you hear there's not agreement. And then Monday morning, or excuse me, Monday afternoon, the af announcement finally pops and Hugh Freeze has landed where we thought Hugh Freeze would land all along when you asked us back in October. Yeah, I feel like we go all the way back to the first discussion we had, and um, I think that was the theme. Is you know, I said I would probably take Lane Kiffin and be my first choice, but if we had to make our predictions, I think both of us said it's probably going to be Hugh Freeze. And I know some people didn't quite agree with that, um, but it just felt like sort of the the momentum was there even early on in this whole thing. And, um, you know, I don't know who all – Auburn may have talked to. We know Kiffin was the top target, um, but that didn't happen. And though I think it was just, to me, it was pretty obvious that uh, the number two target, and what's the same thing we kept saying is, Hugh Freeze gets offered that job, he's taking it, like 100%. There's no question about it. And they offered him the job, and he took it. And um, so now, you know, there's a lot of a lot of different thoughts on the hire and, um, you know, what, what may or – may not be of Hugh Freeze's image at this point in his career, but um, yeah, I don't think this is a surprising hire by any means because uh, it felt like this was where things were headed really from the start. So, Well, look, there's two areas of pushback on the hire. One's the character end, and look, I don't endorse anything Hugh Freeze did, but it was pretty much out there publicly and, and horrible. And I certainly think he paid a price and his family paid a price for that. And certainly he paid a financial price for that. I think he had to walk away from what, like a $19 million buyout at Ole Miss or something along those lines that the numbers may not have been quite that high, but they were pretty steep. So there's that. Not to mention having your name dragged through it publicly. Uh, so I, I think – there's a sense in which we tend to punish people forever for what they do that I don't always think is fair. And, and maybe I'm on the wrong side of this. I don't know, but I'll just leave it at that. The other side is the coaching and look at Auburn. You were hired to beat Alabama, something Hugh Freeze did twice in five years at Ole Miss. It took the rebels to what a cotton bowl. Um, I mean, people have knocked Hugh Freeze's record and certainly it fell off at Ole Miss goes five and seven his last year. Um, you know, where I think he just ran out of defensive players, honestly. Maybe that's a lesson he learns going to Auburn where you can traditionally recruit defensive players and particularly uh, guys in the front four and front three. But all that to say, I think he'll do pretty well at Auburn. I think that was a really solid choice. Hugh Freeze, I think, has still got a lot of wins left in him. And if if the fault is that you you could have picked a better coach if you're Auburn, well, where was he? Who was taking that job that, that's done more than Hugh Freeze? I, I don't have a good answer to that. Let me ask you this. If Hugh Freeze didn't beat Alabama two times in a row, would he be the choice? Maybe not, but that's... Yeah, but I think that's if. like... I get it, but like I think that's... That was a decade ago. Um I I don't know. I, I think that's the only thing I would be curious about is is do we think that was I think that was clearly a, a selling point, right? But I I just think it's an interesting thought. Um if, if and, Michael you know, Jordan I, couldn't have jumped out of the gym, would he have been a great basketball player? I get it. But like my <laughs> my my thing is uh I think that was probably a big part of it, right? And um, you know, I, I feel like that's probably a selling point from the boosters and everybody as well. Here's a guy who beat Saban in back to back years. Well, again, that was, that was a little while ago, I guess. Um, but maybe it wasn't a decade ago. I, it all runs together at this point. But um, I'm just asking the question because I saw somebody, there were multiple people ask the question on Twitter after the hire was made. And I thought it was an interesting discussion. Um, but yeah, like you said, there's a lot to this. And I know there's going to be a lot of strong opinions um, both ways here in terms of where things are at um again from the i think from the image standpoint I, I don't think you can ignore it um and again i know there will be people that are on different sides of the the fence on this um but just from a football coaching standpoint i 
again, I think, you know, Auburn, we know where things are at, right? Like Auburn wants to win. They want to, to be Alabama, you know, it is what it is. Like they want to be able to, to put that together. And, um, I don't know. I just, I think it's one that, I don't know. It's just the, the fit. I mean, I get it. Like, again, I, I think w- one thing you said from the start was we said the reason we didn't think Lane Kiffin would be great there in terms of like, not that he couldn't win, but it was the meshing of the, the personalities, yeah. right. In terms of, you know, understanding who's calling the shots and all of that. And, and we said Hugh Freeze will be the opposite in that he is, this is his second chance. He will do everything he can to fall in line with, you know, what the expectations are and be able to maybe put up with some of the things that a Lane Kiffin may not put up with. And I think that's just as important as anything, just given the, again, the magnitude of the higher where the program's at at this point. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, there's, again, there's, there's so much to this and I'm sure we could spend an hour just going through and dissecting every little tiny angle, but I think there's a lot of interesting questions you can ask in terms of, um, you know, the hire being made and kind of the decisions that led to it. All right, I want to back up a little bit to the first of Hugh Freeze's career. Of course, everybody knows how he rose to prominence. He had his ties to the Michael Orr thing. He gets the job at Arkansas State, which is not exactly a top of the heap football program. Goes ten and three in his first year, and I know that's different than coaching in the SEC. And, and uh, by the way, he before that he coached at an NI, NAI school, Lambeth, which is in our state. The school doesn't even exist anymore. I think he went undefeated his last year, maybe, or close to it. Uh, but his first year at Ole Miss, Blake, do you remember how bad Ole Miss was in 2011? I mean, that program hit rock bottom under Houston Nutt. I'm going to go see if I can find this. I believe Ole Miss was 2-10 and 10 in Nuts last year and was horrible. Uh, let's see. Let me look this up just to be sure. Yeah, that is correct. Um, went 0-8 in the SEC. Just got smoked by anybody and everybody from what I remember. Hugh Freeze goes to Ole Miss, goes 7-6 and six his first year. And if I recall correctly, that was like a pretty good 7-6. and six. I think he had a maybe a good win or two in there. He, he beat Pitt in the Compass Bowl. Yeah, I, I get that how Hugh Freeze went out, the allegations, the off-the-field stuff, which I hope he's gotten some help for and has moved on from. All those things, I get that. But the, the guy won a lot of football games, got Ole Miss inside the top five twice, didn't end there, but got him in the top five. Took over a program that had been decimated and I think the last year, and I'm not saying that doesn't count because he owns that too, I think how it ended at Ole Miss obscures a lot of the great things he did there. Yeah, um, I think that's probably, yeah, there's something to that in terms of, look, I mean, and you just said it, Auburn wants to win, right? Like, that's the name of the game. That's all, I mean, we can say what we want, but, like, they just want to win, and all this other stuff I know is going to be talked about a lot, you know, probably as we go into the off season and, and everything like that, especially over the next couple of weeks, probably because it's fresh on everyone's mind. But um, again, the, the goal was very clear. They, they want to win and they think they have someone that will be able to come in and put them in a position to win games uh, because he did win games at Ole Miss. And um, I don't know, Chris, you saw this trend, right? Think about it. Auburn has now made its third straight hire from a guy who coached at Arkansas State for one season. Um, oh, wow. Malzahn was there for one year. <laughs> Brian Harson was there for one year. Hugh Freeze was there for one year. They were all in consecutive order. You remember that? Freeze was there 2011. Malzahn was there 2012. Harson was there 2013. <laughs> so that's a little interesting dynamic. Um, going back to the Arkansas State. They didn't State target the guy at Utah State um, whose name escaped. Blake, Blake Anderson. Anderson. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, that's, I guess if you're, you're taking bets on the next coach after Hugh Freeze, um, probably going to come from Arkansas State. But, um, yeah, I mean, and I think the Cadillac Williams angle is interesting, right? Because there seems to be a lot of positive momentum towards him returning. 
And again, that's another deeper discussion, I think, in terms of um, the support uh, for both for each guy. Uh, I just think, you know, again, we talked about Cadillac and sort of everything that he had done to, you know, kind of push. I mean, I don't think we ever really thought he was going to get the job, but uh, we did talk about kind of, you know, on the having a face attached to kind of, you know, the positive momentum. I think he was the guy that there was a lot of support behind because he was an Auburn guy. Uh, but if he, you know, is someone that's going to be on the staff, I think that's a huge win for Auburn in that regard. Um, because again, we've seen the impact he can have on that program, even in the span of however many weeks it was. Um, yeah, there, there's a lot to this. I, again, I, I don't even, as I've, Said, told you guys, but I'm I'm under the weather, and I don't even think I've compiled all my thoughts yet. Uh, I think they're. Here's another thing, <laughs> okay. And I know we're going all over the place here, but the report. I don't know if you've seen the report on uh, from Sports Illustrated about Freeze has to relinquish control of his social media accounts when he becomes a coach. Mm. <clears throat> good idea. And, Very good idea. <laughs> but here is here's the quote. Um, and they're also hiring a, a PR firm or whatever to to basically handle all the the blowback that that has already started in terms of the hire. And then uh, this is from uh, yeah, this is from Sports Illustrated. I think it's from Pat Forty, uh, which I know people have different opinions on. But one source with Auburn ties said Sunday, if he's contractually obligated to stay off social media, and they had to hire an oh you know what firm before he even started, is hiring really a good idea? Um, I mean, that they, I think it's fair to say that they, it's clear how much they wanted him if they're going to this length to, to do these kind of things. Um, but I also, I also understand the other side of it. And, you know, I think it is kind of interesting to think about is that there is a lot that has gone into this. And, um, I don't know, like I said, I, I think it, there, there is clearly some blowback in terms of all the other stuff surrounding it, but I mean, teams just want to win, and I think if again, I think they just Look, there's a lot of people Hugh, just want Hugh to win. Hugh Freeze is, and I'm not, I'm not defending any of it, right? I, I think that cheating on your wife is is a pretty serious thing, but to pretend he's the only coach that's done that, I, I know the recruiting violations stuff. I mean, this is the SEC. Do, do we really think everybody in the SEC who wins has been clean? I think sometimes that that gets picked selectively. If somebody doesn't like the fact that a coach doesn't win, and if a coach wins, a lot of stuff gets overlooked. I'm not saying I endorse it. I'm not saying it makes it right. You get subject to all sorts of temptation. Now, the thing that I would do is I would hire him a, a chief of staff or somebody to travel with them and keep him out of trouble. Um, it probably a lot of coaches would need that. I think that'd be a really good investment. I think that would probably save everybody a lot of trouble and peace of mind. Um, I'm probably alone in that, but all right. It, it's funny to me when these cards get played because there's a lot of coaches out there that have done a lot of the same things Hugh Freeze has done. Again, that doesn't make it right. I don't endorse it. He did some awful things, but I think at some point you deserve the chance to move on with your life. Uh, forgiveness is a virtue in America we don't do well with. And and I hope it works. I do. I hope that uh, his second chance in the SEC goes well, that he avoids all the things that tripped him up before, and this works. Because um, I, I don't want to see the guy get his life ruined, and I, I, do hope that, I do hope that he learned from a lot of the things that he did wrong uh, the first go-around at Ole Miss. Well, and, and I'm just going to say this. Like, I – and, you know, I brought up some of the stuff I brought up because this is part of the discussion. I think it's important to to lay out everything rather than just, you know, one side of this. And I think it's I think that's important in this scenario. And again, you can, I mean, look, there's a lot of people who are watching this that are on Twitter. They see they see all the discussions that have been had over the past 24 hours or whatever. And we know there's a lot of angles to this. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of stuff. And I just think that, again, it's it's worth thinking about, but at the end of the day, we understand why the hire was made. And guess what's guess what else is different from the last time he's in the SEC, right? NIL. It's 
it's now a thing yeah. you know that's it's it exists and so that makes it a little bit different now in terms of um you know talk about paying players and all this other stuff but now players are getting played or pay, pay, players are getting paid and you know it's, so it's one of those things that that's changed too so how does he operate you know in that dynamic now and it's a different thing but I don't know. I just think there's a lot, again, I still think there's a lot to chew on with this hire. And I know some people, you know, are to the extreme one way, extreme the other way. And they have their reasons for that. Um, as always, as I said, Chris, it's just right now, um, they just want to win. And Auburn wants to win football games, just like everybody else in the SEC does. And um, you're going to get a lot of strong opinions, I think, one way or the other, of whether this was the route to go. But um We'll see. I, I just think the, the social media thing is just, I find that fascinating. Um, Cause again, can you think of any other situations where we've had, where that's been in a, I mean, maybe there's some, we just don't know about, I'm sure, but I still think it's kind of an interesting tidbit on that. So. Well, look, I, I have, I have two people that are pretty good friends that know him to different levels and both like him. Um, I'll just I'll leave it at that. I, I think that there's two sides to his personality. I think that when he had a lot of free time on the road is when he got in trouble. That's when a lot of people get in trouble. That's why I say I would I would hire somebody to basically travel with him and and run interference. I, I know that sounds out of the box, but look at the <laughs> yeah, look at the investment just, yeah. teams make in programs. I, I, I think it'd be I think it'd be a good choice, but. Um, that then the, the taking his Twitter away is also a good idea because his lack of self control there has gotten him in trouble. Well, but again, let, let's let's not sit and pretend that he's the only coach who's ever had problems with these things. No, I'm not saying that either. Um, because again, I I'm I'm like I said, I think it's important just to to lay it all out there in terms of. And again, if you've been on Twitter, you've seen all the stuff and you see a lot of the, you know, stuff traced back to, to Liberty and, and everything else. And, um, but yeah, I mean, like I said, I, I, there are people that I know at, at Auburn, we know Donovan, our Auburn super fan. Uh, I'm sure he'll, he'll weigh in on this, but you know, there are people I know at Auburn that I've talked to since this hire was made. And, you know, it's, I think it's probably two people and each is on a completely different side of this thing. And so I just think it is one, but I, I think with a lot of coaching hires, you're going to see that this one to me is just a little bit more, you know, there's a lot more to it um, in yeah. terms of just everything that's, that's come to this point, everything that's gotten them here. And again, I think that's just, um, yeah, we'll see how it does because, you know, he has one, one football games. And uh, I still think that is above all else. What Auburn wants to do is win football games. And, you know, people, some people might say by any means necessary and all this other stuff, but um, I think it's just very clear that that's, that's, that's your goal when you make, make a hire and um, they didn't win enough games under Brian Harson, and they want to win football games. So, you know, Auburn has had issues offensively the last few years. I think he'll fix that in a hurry. Yeah. I don't, yeah. I mean, I know the offense, I don't think you have any issues with. I think he will. I think he will clearly get them on the right track offensively. Um, and again, I think the Cadillac angle is important too, because if he comes back, I think there's a lot of positive momentum, probably recruiting wise, just having him given what they've, you know, again, what, what they've accomplished towards the end. And I know it wasn't, you know, again, you know, V D and M beat Western Kentucky, but, but still, I, I think there's, there's something to that, to have someone like that. And that, that's where I think to me, a Hugh Free staff with Cadillac Williams versus a Hugh Free staff without Cadillac Williams. I think there's a significant difference there because if you, you know, you're talking about Auburn and you're wanting to present, you know, your Auburn guys, Hugh Free's not an Auburn guy, but Cadillac is. And even if he was never going to be the, the new head coach, having him involved would be, would at least, I think, you know, give them a little something extra there in terms of um, having a guy like that to, because again, what you said, I mean, there, there is some blowback, and so I think having you know someone like Cadillac and in in that spot to to be able to you know if he's if he's all in on it, and we know he's all in on Auburn. Uh, I can't imagine there are many other people that are as all in on Auburn as Cadillac Williams. Um, I think that'll be an important part of this. So, 
I'm looking ahead to Auburn's schedule next year. They play New Mexico State, Chris. Oh, no kidding. Well, they play UMass to open. They go to Cal. That's an odd one. I wonder how that happened. Samford, they open with AM and the SEC, then Georgia, then LSU, then Ole Miss. Man, they jump right into it. Mississippi State, then a road trip to Vandy, road trip to Fayetteville, and then New Mexico State, as you mentioned, which we mentioned that because Freeze laid an egg in his last game at Liberty. I would say that team was probably a little distracted, and they got beat by one of the worst teams in the. Division one. What a weird year when you you win at Arkansas and you lose to New Mexico State at home, and then yeah. of course the game with Alabama. So it's not a, not an easy schedule. Uh, there are some built in wins there. You would think Cal, I think, is a game they should should win, but we'll, we'll see. And anyway, that's that's how it'll go next year. Yeah. By the way, we are doing this early in the morning, and it, <clears throat> Cadillac on a, on a separate note here did tweet last night that he's. He's there. He's staying. So I think he's a picture with freeze. So, so yeah, it sounds like he will, you know, what will his role be? We'll see, but um, that's a big, that's a big boost. I think in terms of, you know, I think just for the, the image part of this thing, I think having him there is, is significant. So, um, but again, we'll, we'll see, like I said, the schedule is very interesting and we'll see how quickly, um, you know, he puts together the kind of roster and in this era with NIL and transfers and everything, you, we know you can put together a, a winning roster very quickly. And so, um, yeah, we'll see. Before we go, was there an alternative available to Auburn that it should have explored before hiring Hugh Freeze or, or maybe made a choice before Hugh Freeze? I, I think it was a pretty good hire. Um, I mean, that's a good question. I think – Look, from a football standpoint, uh, again, I'm not – I'm just throwing out – because, again, Twitter's been a very interesting place for the past, like I said, 24 hours. And I think I've just thrown out a lot of stuff that I've seen on both sides of the coin here. But just from a football coaching standpoint, yeah, I mean, he can he can coach. So, like you said, offense is – we talk about kind of the appeal of the offense in this era of college football. He's going to have a, a very appealing offense that a lot of top prospects are going to want to come play in. And so I think from, from that standpoint, yes. And, and who were, who would the other options have been realistically? I mean, who, right? Cause we, I mean, we said from the beginning, I thought it was a two person race. It was Lane Kiffin and Hugh Freeze. And I just don't know who else would have been in that same, you know, unless you're just taking a top coach from somewhere else, you know, a top power conference coach or something that, you know, had won games and all that. I just don't know who else, that would be, I guess. So, um, cause I mean, look, let's, let's be honest too. It's the state of the program is not good. No. <laughs> so let's, let's, let's call it what it is. I mean, it's, that's the thing is like, this was not, we can say that, you know, the Auburn job is a good one and all that, but the program right now is not <laughs> in a great spot. So I think you have to consider that too. Uh, and that, you know, and when we talked about the booster situation and everything that goes with it. So, it yeah i mean you you know you joked about like kevin Steele and guys like that right i mean it's like yeah it's it's who's willing to i think be in that spot and understand the pressure that comes along with it before we wrap up a shout out to our sponsor stakes you can predict sports better than the crowd for a chance to win nfts with stakes players can forever cement their sports predictions against friends other fans and influencers don't let your sports genius go overlooked join stakes and have the best predictions captured in the moment Go to playwithstakes.com forward slash 14. Use our invite code Southeastern14 for a double welcome bonus. It's a predictions app, not a betting app. Free to join, free to play. You can win stuff. You can support those who support our channel. What's not to like about stakes? Yeah, I, th I think you mentioned one other thing. I think the fit and the willing to deal with the boosters and everything was another thing. Uh, you could say, well, we'd like so-and-so or We've won such and such and deserve such and such, but there's stuff that comes with being at Auburn. Uh, dealing with that, I would imagine that was a little bit of a deterrent to Lane Kiffin probably, I'm, I'm guessing, not reporting. Again, Hugh Freeze, we said from the beginning, we thought would be a good choice for Auburn for those reasons. And uh, now we'll see how it plays out. But I know this, the SEC West just got a lot more interesting. My goodness, there are some 
phenomenal coaches in that part of the league. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's it's. I mean, the, the coaching is, yeah, not an issue in the SEC right now. And yeah, I mean, it's just getting stronger and stronger. And you know, like you said, we know Texas and Oklahoma joining soon, and that will continue to make the league even stronger than it already is. And um, yeah, so well, again, we'll see how it turns out. But I think it's just um, it's an interesting interesting period for Auburn football now, and that program's in an interesting spot that probably hasn't been in a while just in terms of everything that has built to this point and you know if he wins games i think a lot of people will will be fine with that um if he doesn't then yeah i mean we know what happens in the sec so um yeah we'll see how it plays out it'll be interesting to see who hits the portal and joins him in auburn how Auburn finishes and recruiting, all those sorts of things. Uh, we, we'll probably talk about that on our Wednesday night live stream. Best way to make sure you get that, hit that subscribe button. We're doing a ton of SEC basketball. Where Auburn's got a pretty fair team in that sport, too, that we will talk about a lot. Again, hit that subscribe button. It costs you nothing. You get all our content. Thanks for watching Southeastern 14 presented by Stakes. We'll see you again soon.